Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan and this is Steve and welcome to Constantine Discussions. Today we are talking about the 12th episode, Angels and Ministers of Grace. And if you were, uh, if you haven't been watching the main Primetime Crisis video we were just talking about, you just caught us right in the middle of talking about how, um, <laughs> uh, according to Steve, uh, there is a chance that Constantine is going to get saved pretty soon. Uh, it sounds like a pretty decent chance, right? I, I, Steve said yeah. that it might, it might go to the Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah, um, so one of the producers on on Constantine is actually the guy that created the first sci-fi original series. So he's confirmed, along with a bunch of other news sites, that they're in serious talks to move it over to sci-fi. And they're going to call it Hellblazer, and they're allowed to get away with a lot more stuff and do more of the horror comic, political comic stuff in the series. Um, and NBC really doesn't want to cancel it. NBC really loves the show. They just aren't sure if they can afford to keep it on their main network. Well, it's cool that they're at least coming out and saying we support it, and if it gets canceled, just know it's because we can't afford to make it, not that we don't believe in it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, it sounds like they're handling the cat, it. in the production, and everyone in the studio loves the show. It's just a matter of it's not getting the ratings they think it deserves. Well, I think it's really cool they're handling it that way. I mean, if, if it ends up, even if it got canceled and Sci-Fi didn't pick it up, I don't think NBC will go down in history as being like Fox. Right, and I mean, even if, uh, even if it gets canceled and Sci-Fi doesn't get it, Amazon's got an exclusive contract to air the episode, so Amazon is interested in picking it up, too. Yeah, so there's no way we don't get more episodes of this show at this point, right? Or at least, like, really unlikely. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to uh, curse it and say there's no way and it's guaranteed, <laughs> but there's a really, really strong chance that it's going to continue. That is really exciting. I gotta say, uh, yes. uh, you know, this being the, uh, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Um, I'll say this real quick, and then uh, uh, Steve, you can go ahead and give your uh, two cents on the on the episode. But uh, I finished this episode and said, man, we've got one more left, and this is not the time to stop this show, right? Like we are, yeah, we're finally already making Manny a much more fleshed out human character. Ironically, because he's an angel and. Like, this is not, it does not feel like a show that's almost done. And you sure don't want it to end right now. Um, Steve, Angels and Ministers of Grace, how'd you feel about this episode? Um, first off, we don't talk enough about episode titles, but yeah. it's a really good episode title. Um, and I really like this. I don't think it's as good as the last couple episodes, mostly because I think there's some continuity issues with how angel powers work. Okay, and I, I think would, I'll you, just go ahead and start would, you there. would you elaborate on that? Because I didn't pick up on that. Go ahead. Um, so in the episode with the fallen angel, I can't remember what that one was called, but in the episode with the fallen angel, there's that thing where John begs Manny to help him, and Manny does it by possessing Zed's body and then taking out the angel. But in this episode, he says, if I'm in a human body, I lose contact with all my powers. And when John tries to call on him, he says, I've never asked you for anything before, but that's not true, because he has. And he's done it in the favor for him before. Um, so that's weird. That felt like awkward dialogue. If you just cut those two lines, it would have been no problem. Okay. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I, th this was really good. I, I thought this was um, fascinating character stuff. And it proves the point that we were talking about last episode with you don't need to make this show about some master manipulator plot, even though it is about that. Because you can just do episodes with characters that move things forward slowly, and they still matter, and they still resonate with you, and they still have the emotional impact. Um, I thought everything we got between... John not being able to admit uh, Zed's condition and Zed trying to live with it and Manny trying to interact now with two people and being more human both literally and figuratively, I thought all that was handled really well. Um, I love the guy that plays Manny. Um, he was in the, in the two Matrix sequels, and he's terrible in that because those are terrible movies. But he finally gets to show some range in his acting capabilities, and he's not the same stoic, sarcastic uh, angel he was before. There, there's a degree of fear in what he's doing and a lot of misunderstanding, and a lot of stuff with him that's nuanced in the performance with what is it like for this guy to be human for the first time ever and to actually feel the heartbeat and to feel fear and to feel pain and stuff like that. I thought that was all great. Um, with the only part that I actually didn't like about the human being my worst moment is when we get to that thing with the nurse and they have and they have sex in one of uh, the back rooms. I get the point of that. That's all fine. But it felt a little bit contrived and a little bit generic that it's in a hospital, so let's do the generic hospital drama thing of the doctors dating each other. Uh, and I didn't care for that. Um, other than that, though, I thought it was great. Um, it's not a very John episode, 
But there's a lot of good stuff for John when it comes to how he feels about Zed and how he feels about the cost of magic. Um, and there's a number of great John moments you could pick here with um, when he's when he's talking to Manny about uh, whether or not he should see her or that bit at the end when he's in the church talking to her or even just the funny stuff of John lights up his cigarette using a church candle. I didn't which catch is hilarious. That. That's awesome. Somehow <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Yeah, uh, and, I mean, um, I just thought it was really good. It's not as good as last week's episode, but it's yeah. it's still, like, one of the well, best shows on TV. But last week's episode was standout for the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I want to I wanna cover a couple things you said real quick. First of all, the guy who plays Manny was also a major character in Lost. He was really good there. Oh, and okay. he, uh, and this show's had a lot of Lost alum. Um, it, uh... He, he, he tends to kind of get typecast as characters that are supposed to be unlikable and or at least eventually that way and Manny so far does not seem to be that but he could end up being that still I think I, I like like there's still there's still some mystery um, there and yet I uh, I thought there was a lot of like genuine warmth with how he felt about humans after being one of them and the way he um like like he has a really nice subtle character arc. I like that I uh, that, that that getting a taste of what it's like to be human, he appreciates humans even more than he did before. And there seems to be a, a, a certain amount of respect, I think partially just built into his genetic makeup really, you know, be, being an angel and they're they're supposed to uh, almost not worship humans, but they're almost subservient to them in a way, and in, in in how the hierarchy works, because they're not God's elect, you know, they have that whole thing going on, and uh, we, we had some discussion about that in that episode with the fallen angel that I also don't remember the episode title of, and uh, <laughs> anyway, so um, so you get to the end of this, and Manny uh, I, I, like, like sees suddenly sees uh, Zed as really heroic because she is uh, willing to keep this tumor in her head that could kill her at any time, nobody knows, and uh, she's just doing that because she's trying to uh, do the right thing and help people, and uh, she believes in what John's doing, and Manny believes in what John's doing, and I like that in the middle of the episode, um, Manny tells, or maybe it's even toward the beginning when he first gets his powers, uh, or loses powers, that um, he doesn't he doesn't see how John can keep going on doing what he's doing I, I like like being human is hard and there's uh, so much pain and is it worth the good stuff about being uh, about being human and um, John tends to get the uh, short end of the stick everywhere and um, and part of that of course is uh, because of the uh, as, as we keep saying uh, the, the way he keeps getting himself uh, in the same situation over and over again so some of that is his fault but I like that a lot of this episode was about how not everything is John's fault and that um, being human is about uh, the is about uh, trade-off and that uh, the sometimes uh, the the horrible stuff that you have to experience being mortal is worth it because there's um, so many uh, really good positive things uh, and yet it wasn't sappy about that because much of the time even the positive things are just you help somebody else out not you're um, it's not always just you got to have sex you know, you, you know what I mean it's not <laughs> it's not always that um, I totally see why you reacted uh, to that scene that way uh, I did too to a degree although I felt like and, and yeah it's a little convenient and we kind of got to just get something in there uh, for Manny to appreciate the contrast of the pros and cons uh, to being human and that ultimately uh, it is a rewarding experience. Um, or at the very least, I mean, maybe I'm even going too far saying that, or, or, or at the very least that, uh, that um, you know, you get moments of pleasure for all, for all of the pain. Um... <laughs> And, uh, and I, oh, by the way, that whole speech that John has about, um, I don't understand how in the world that's a sin, uh, I really like yes. that. Yes. That was, that, that was, that's my best line. That I was, love that. Oh, that was wonderful. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate that Manny got something like that to do. I think for this show, it's probably good that it was something adult like that. Um, and I don't think it was too adult or anything. Um, but, uh, but I'm with you. It's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit contrived. An, an, another show, uh, would make it like eating food or something, right? Wait, how many times have we seen that? We're like an, an, an immortal <laughs> or someone like loses powers, uh, that wasn't human and, and they, and they become human. And then, um, all of a sudden they have taste buds and they go around eating everything. Uh, we've done it in Star Trek like 50 times. Uh, I was trying that you mentioned that cause I was watching that episode of Angel today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, really? Were you reminded, uh, Steve, you've watched most of Next Generation, yes? I've watched all of Next Generation, Okay, yeah. were you reminded at all of uh, Deja Q 
when uh, Q uh, loses powers, becomes human, and orders ten chocolate yes. sundaes. Uh, I, I was yes. I was reminded of that this entire episode, <laughs> uh, and and I and I liked and I liked how how it played it with the the dark flavor of this show. This is definitely the most humorous episode so far, and that's very telling because it's not laugh out loud funny. The, the humor in the show is really dry, and um and yet I found it really funny in a lot of places. Um, I could live with an entire season of Manny as a human. I mean, I, I could all potentially live with, like, a Manny spinoff. I, I like that yeah. when we get stuff with Somebody Manny, it, it's really like not even, guy. like, sappy. Um, at the end of the day, it's a good message. It's yeah, at the end of yeah. the day, there's an element to his character now where it, the cost of being an angel is that he can't experience that ever again anymore. Yeah. Um, and that you're breaking the rules by doing it in the first place. So it, it's, a ha it's a happy ending. It, it's a more optimistic thing than we've gotten before. But now that guy has an experience and has, has used himself in such a way that he can't ever get back. Um, and that ultimately makes the same kind of tragic tone that we've got for the rest of the series. Uh, you know, and we, we talk a lot about consequences in the show because that's what it's all about. And I like that we're, in this episode, exploring um, positive uh, and, and negative consequences at the same time. Or what I mean is consequences of doing the right thing also, right? Like, 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 like a lot of the time, it's really easy to look at it as you do magic that's always bad because you're, like, going against nature or something. Uh, but in this show, it's more complicated than that because there are a lot of hints of... God gives people powers and they're supposed to use them, but then there's a but then there are still consequences to that. And the the whole idea is just that there's a price for everything. It doesn't matter if it's positive. It doesn't matter that that it's, that it's negative. Um, and I think I I I guess I guess I guess this is just me I I kind of kind of analyzing this whole this whole notion. But I think the idea of there are consequences to everything is exactly the same as uh, there's a there's a bright side and a and a and a dark side to everything. I mean it's it's just it's exactly the same thing. There's always a trade off. Um, yeah, uh, I, there's an, actually an issue of Hellblazer where John gets to talk with God, oh, and cool. they have like a long conversation. And at the end of the day. Uh, God is essentially just Manny, but aged. Like he, they come to the same realization, and John gets that same answer of everything has a consequence. Doesn't matter if it's good or doesn't matter if it's bad. Um, yeah. And you can spin it any way you want, but at the end of the day, you're going to lose something, even if you get something. And then the question, of course, is well, then what is the point of doing anything? And you know what I mean? Like, what is the point of doing the right thing? Because because yeah. you, you'll lose something, and ultimately, it, it just all comes down to human nature, I, I think, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's probably what this, the, where, where the show is really kind of going with it, is that, um, is, is that, you know, you could, uh, you could just live any way you want to, because there's always going to be negative consequences to everything, but what are the consequences you can live with versus the ones that you can't? I, like, like, I think that's the distinction. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and it's good that we don't get a complete answer to that in that episode. Like, it's a question where we can talk about, but I can totally see that that being a, a, a uh, an entire season theme, something that John has to wrestle with moving forward. It's an yeah. idea, but it's one that still could definitely evolve into something a bit more. Yeah, because, I mean, like, he's such a complex character, you know, it makes me want to go back and examine why he decided to uh, start fighting the rising darkness in the first place, you know? Is it because of guilt, or is it because of responsibility? Yeah, exactly. Um, and there's a bit of now with Manny that is he going to be okay with sending John on these missions now that he knows what it's like to be human? Yeah. So whatever John's reasoning is, there's an element of can John manipulate him now or does Manny have to try and understand what John needs as opposed to just using him as the tool that he was using for the rest of the series? Well, and do you think that there was any amount of Manny like playing that up or do you think that it was all genuine? I think all of it was genuine. I do too. Um, it's hard to say though. That's simply what I'm because of the nature of the show. At the same time, I feel like if he was if he was faking any bit of it, it wouldn't make sense considering he's never been human before. Unless he has. And Unless we just he has. That's kind of what I was alluding to. Um, I like that when you get to the end of the episode, Manny is not angry with John for playing him the way he did. Because he yeah. gave him something. It was almost a gift. And I think that was really cool. And as much as this episode is about consequences, it's also about gifts versus curses. And so, you know, as, at the same time as, uh, as, as there's a positive and a negative to everything, uh, uh, every curse is also a gift, and every gift is also a curse. Or at least, or at least a lot of them. Uh, but, like, 
you know, you've got that moment where Manny figures out that John could have reversed it and turned him back into an angel at any time. And I was really surprised when he got to the end of the episode and he doesn't berate him for it. I also like that he doesn't thank him for it either. He's really neutral. Like, they just don't talk about it. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think that made a lot of sense. Um, especially because, you know, at the end of the day, I guess John was... I mean, maybe he wasn't right in the way he played him, but it, it was maybe a thing that had to happen. Yeah, and I mean, in that way, you have to talk about, like, the intention behind it. So, yeah. John forces Manny to become human, but he does it out of selfishness, he does it out of anger, he does it as a punishment, as we have to put this guy on a leash. Yeah. And ultimately, he teaches him that it's a reward, and uh, Manny thinks of it almost as a reward. So, it, it almost raises this question of, if you get anything in life, period, and is there a basis for it that almost that Nietzsche idea of is there a basis for it in something that's completely the opposite and if so if if every reward starts as a punishment then what does that say about rewards in general what does that say about living in general because yeah. th there's an origin to everything that is built on a foundation that probably wouldn't have supported it well, and there's still also a bit of an end justifies the means question there too, right? Where like, like, uh, okay, so it ends up with him being glad that he got to be human and he learned something really positive from it. But well, if that wasn't John's intention in the first place, then John was still manipulative, and you know, he doesn't he doesn't suddenly become not manipulative just because it turned out well. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, and this is, again, something, and it's terrible that we've only got one episode left this season. Yeah. Because this is a thing that I would love to see them talk about for a good couple of episodes following this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I thought it was really cool that you get to the end and there's not a big argument about it, uh, that, that, that he doesn't complain about it. I thought that was, that was really cool. Uh, I'm also glad that there's no cliffhanger for this episode. Um, next season being a season finale... Um, it's episode? great that we don't end this one in a fashion that's just a gimmick to get to this next part. That's a really good point. On the other hand, um, well, no, they could have. They certainly could have done that because even not knowing if they were getting canceled or, or not, they knew how many episodes were ordered in the first place. So yeah, they totally could have done that. Uh, do you have a favorite quote beyond the one that you that we mentioned earlier? Uh, no, that was my big one. Um, I thought that whole line was fantastic, especially the way he capped it off with "Do what thou wilt." I loved that. I wrote that one down too. I. Uh, this one was really quotable. Uh, what a wonderful script! I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a few things. Uh, heroes are usually jerks at heart. I like that a lot. I, I, I like uh, that that describes just how John sees himself. Um, he, 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 and and I and I think that um, that's like that's like his arrogance and his insecurity all rolled into one, right? Like like he actually to a degree sees himself as a hero. I think. Uh, and yeah, it and goes he kind of hates that. that. Cardi he's, has of he's, master of the dark arts. He has to get that changed. Yeah. I, I, lo I love that line. That's fantastic. Uh, there's there's like an inherent dichotomy there. Um, this is the labyrinth we choose to walk. Good good yeah. lord. I, I watch the show and I go, I wish I could write like that. You know, I, <laughs> uh, I love stuff like that. Um, Chaz, you should have just killed me. I gotta ask you, by the way, a question about Chaz. Um, does he have a healing factor that's not related to his being killed? Uh, I thought that he had to die in order to come back and, and be healed and stuff. But apparently, it doesn't matter if he actually dies. His curse also comes with just a straight-up generic uh, 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 healing factor. See, I'm not sure if it just comes with a generic healing factor, though, because he's still, like, limping for most of the episode. Oh, okay. Well, I thought they did a shot where, like, it was starting to heal. Oh, I'm not, okay. Maybe I, I didn't see that, but, like, when you get to the end, maybe he's still I was kind of limping around. So okay. it, it's possible that um, well, then how you come... have to kill him before he heals. Okay, but then, but then that makes uh, that makes John a lot meaner than I thought he was <laughs> because I mean, he could have stabbed himself in the leg and, uh, to, to get in there. Like, like, why, why? Well, I, I guess, I guess it still had to be him uh, to do. No, because then the thing with Manny was just a matter of dropping a vial or something. Anybody could have of something. Anybody could have done that. Um, okay, yeah. So um, I am questioning. I never get to criticize the show for anything, so I'm going to criticize. I am questioning John um, stabbing Chaz just because he's the guy who gets mortally wounded all the time, even though he's not going to die here. Yeah, and when Chaz says, you should have just killed me, I'm like, well, yeah, and then Chaz pulls the thing out, and I'm going, you're not supposed to do that. Um, okay, other, other quotes. Uh, Manny to John, did you page me? I think that's really funny. Um, like, like, and then John rebuttal to that saying you should have had a pager sooner. It's yeah. so convenient. <laughs> I missed that 
line? That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I couldn't believe that. He's like paging Manny. Uh, and and that, that's inherently hilarious, too, because uh, you think about all the times in the show that he's like called for Manny and tried to get him to show up, and sometimes he shows up and sometimes not. Now that he's a human and has him on that leash, as you put it, now he can just yeah, exactly. page him. I love that. Um, I didn't even think of that. that that's, that's hilarious. Okay, um, let's do trivia questions really quick. Uh, what is your serve? Okay, so um, there's a character in this episode that's the fake out for the real killer, yeah. and um, he actually looks and sounds quite a bit like a comic book character. Uh, he he looks a lot like the Family Man serial killer from I think it was Jamie Delano's second to last story arc. Um, but in that run, in the Family Man killer, who was what occupation did that killer actually have? <laughs> His occupation was. Family man. Um, <laughs> my 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 trivia question is uh, because I'm so fixated on the hilarity of the Chaz thing. Uh, what is Chaz impaled with as a ruse to get him in the hospital? You noticed that earlier I said the thing because I didn't want to <laughs> say what the thing was. Uh, yeah. And anyway, um, okay, we are uh, really close to uh, finish. Yeah, we just have a minute here, uh, so I want to uh, see if there's anything else here that I wrote down that I wanted to mention. Um. No, that's it. I thought I had some predictions, but I have already talked about them. Anything else that you want to throw out, Steve? Um, no, aside from I really hope that we do get official confirmation of this show continuing. I don't want it to be one more episode. It's too good for that. I think the best thing that could happen is that they get it figured out and resolved by next week. This won't happen. But what would be really cool is if we had a title card at the end of the last episode that was like, don't worry, it's coming back on this network. Uh, that would be so cool. Well, I mean, it, it's possible that, I mean, we won't get that, but it's possible that we'll have a decision by next week because NBC is looking at the final two episode ratings before they make any kind of final call. So, oh, so they're we will still probably have an out. answer next weekend. So you're saying there's still even a possibility that it gets renewed on NBC? Yeah, it, I mean, anything's possible right now. They are looking at as many options as possible to keep the show alive, which is good. Yeah, that's wonderful. I just love that NBC is so um, is so behind it, and uh, it's just a, it's just a question of whether or not they can afford it. Yeah, and I mean, they've had Grimm on this channel, and Grimm had worse ratings. Or not Grimm, I mean Hannibal uh, had worse ratings on the first season. Um, Grimm is a show that they do really well with, and it's exactly like Constantine, but not as good. So uh, there, there's a precedent for keeping it alive. It's just a matter of can they do it justice? Can they keep the budget there? Can they keep the censorship working? Yeah, because what you don't want is for them to have to drop production quality in order to keep it going, because it just looks really good, and you don't want them to lose that. Yeah, exactly. I, I guess it'd be part of the issue of if it moves to sci-fi, it probably wouldn't look as good. Um, but that's okay, considering they can do more horror stuff, and horror works better when you see less. I hope they get to uh, shoot it at least on the same standing sets that they have right now. I hope we don't lose yeah, that. Yeah, probably, because uh, NBC owns all that, so it potentially it could still do that. Okay. Well, uh, let's go ahead and do trivia, the answers to our trivia questions really quick. And uh, what, what was your what, what was his occupation besides family? Man? I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to take a guess. Was okay. he a doctor? No, he oh, was a police okay. officer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, he was actually the very first um, villain or antagonist in a Hellblazer comic that wasn't inherently supernatural. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, he was just a, uh, a cop that had a terrible life and became a serial killer. If you had said ice cream truck driver, I would have lost my mind. That would have been amazing. I would have lost <laughs> my mind. Um, all right, the answer to my trivia question is a screwdriver. A screwdriver. Yes. And I don't mean the kind with orange juice. So anyway, uh, <laughs> everybody, thanks as always for watching Constantine Discussion. Sure hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you are watching this on the uh, separate video... We will see you again next week. And if you're watching this on the lengthy video with all of the things, we will still continue to see you because we have a couple more shows for you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Steve Baxter.